So now that we've looked at the basic overview of the human digestive system, we're going to now begin looking at the pathway of digestion. We're going to entitle this first flowchart on that idea as the digestive pathway, and this will be Roman numeral 1. So what we're going to do is go from the beginning to the end of digestion. Food processing involved four steps, ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. Throughout this digestive pathway, we're going to be seeing all of those four processing steps show up in some way, shape, or form as we go through the different compartments. So this pathway of digestion will basically be the compartments from the beginning, the middle, and the end of digestion. So to begin, the very first compartment of digestion is one that many of us are familiar with, that is the oral cavity. A cavity is just an opening, and this is the mouth opening. The oral cavity is the first compartment of digestion, and it's also going to be commonly referred to as the mouth. So we can state that the oral cavity, as a purpose, as a function, serves as the primary site of ingestion. This is where food enters the digestive tract. And in addition, some people often don't remember this, is that not only is ingestion going to begin here, this is also where we're going to have some initial digestion. So some digestion. Digestion is again breakdown of big big food pieces into smaller food pieces is going to occur here as well. Now remember digestion can either be mechanical or chemical and the mouth will actually exhibit both. The oral cavity will exhibit both. How so? There will be mechanical digestion in the mouth and mechanical digestion is physical digestion. It's when you make big things into smaller things. Think about it like this. Whenever you eat something, you will always make it into smaller pieces within the mouth via teeth, right? Teeth are going to grind and crush the food into smaller pieces so that it's easier to ingest, so that it's easier to send to the next compartment. And that's something that's mechanically done. So this is the teeth utilized within the mouth in order to break down food into smaller pieces. We don't, generally speaking, we don't swallow food whole. We always break it down into smaller pieces. Mechanical digestion does that for us. In addition, there will also be some chemical digestion the moment food enters the mouth, but it depends on what type of food you're eating. The chemical digestion here, again, is when you take large organic molecules and turn them into smaller organic molecules. Here, this is going to be chemically done, and this will be through the salivary glands. Remember how we said that the salivary glands begin secreting before you even eat, and this is in preparation for digestion? This is what's going to be seen here. The salivary glands will secrete that mouth-watering feeling that you get and that's going to be salivary amylase. This is the specific hydrolytic enzyme that will be secreted by the mouth. So we need to remember this. Salivary amylase is an enzyme. You should remember, of course, it's an enzyme with the ASE ending. What does it do? What does it chemically digest? Salivary amylase will hydrolyze. It hydrolyzes carbs. It hydrolyzes specifically large carbohydrates in the form of starch and also glycogen. These are both storage forms of carbohydrates, very much polysaccharide in their nature, and they're very, very uh, sort of complete forms of carbs that we eat. Think of like a piece of bread or a pretzel or anything that's very starchy or full of carbs. That's going to be immediately hydrolyzed chemically digested via salivary amylase from the salivary glands. How do the salivary glands produce this? Of course, that's through an exocrine gland, through a duct. So once starch and glycogen has been hydrolyzed, what is the end result? A hydrolysis is breaking down, right? It's going to break down, and starch and glycogen will be broken down into not the specific monomers just yet. These are polymers, but they'll actually be broken down into what digestion is all about into smaller polysaccharides. So they're still in a polysaccharide form, so smaller polysaccharides, and also sometimes maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide. It depends on what type of polysaccharide you're consuming. Some of them may turn into maltose. Most of them will just turn into smaller polysaccharides. Now, smaller polysaccharides are still too big to get into the cell. What we'll see later is that there will be more digestion of these smaller polysaccharides, but it's a good head start that begins in the mouth chemically through salivary amylase. 
Now, in addition to the fact that we have this initial digestion via salivary amylase and also mechanical via teeth, we're going to mix all of these components that form as a result of this mechanical and chemical digestion. We're going to mix it with something known as salivary mucus. So this is a separate process. It's a separate substance, a separate secretion. Salivary mucus, is its purpose is to act as a lubricant. So when you have food in your mouth, most of the time that food begins in sort of a dry state and that's not good for digestion. It's hard to digest very dry food. Think of like a pretzel. You don't want to be swallowing that until it is a little bit lubricated. That lubrication is done through salivary mucus and that's specifically with the molecules that are known as mucins. So salivary mucus contains mucins that act as a lubricant. Mucins from a biochemical perspective are simply just glycoproteins. That's their chemical structure. They are glycoproteins and as glycoproteins they're going to basically help things move around because whenever you eat something, this is something we've, we notice uh, but never really understand why, you always move it around within the mouth. It doesn't usually stay on one side. You go from the left side to the right side, top of the mouth, bottom of the mouth. That moving around of the food is aided by this lubricant known as mucin. And that's going to be useful in helping you digest later on. This breakdown of food is certainly happening here. And in addition, the mucins will be protecting the mouth's lining as well protects mouth lining because sometimes you may be eating something that might not be a very safe or maybe a very hard substance that might be a sharp on some ends the mouth is a very soft tissue lined structure you can protect it by having mucins um, this sort of mucus like substance that gives saliva its thickness that gives it its viscosity saliva isn't like water where it flows very easily there's a bit of viscosity to it it's all due to the muc mucins that are functioning in this way Finally, if you combine the mucins, you combine the salivary amylase, you combine the food that's being broken down, all of that that's happening within the oral cavity, you're going to finally summarize everything, complete everything by using the tongue, which is a structure within the oral cavity, to form what is known as the bolus. So this is a term to know. The end result of the oral cavity's role in digestion is to form a bolus with the tongue. A bolus is simply a lump of food. So when you consume anything, when you ingest anything and break it down initially through the mouth, you end up with a bolus. This is the structure, this is the thing that will be swallowed. And so, therefore, the bolus is going to be the next thing that will move towards the next compartment. It moves towards the next compartment, which is the pharynx, to be swallowed. So we still haven't swallowed the actual food yet. All we've done is ingested it, broken it down slightly via mechanical and chemical means, and we've made it into something that's easily swallowable in this bolus form. And that covers our look at the oral cavity. In the next video, we'll conclude the, the beginning of this digestive pathway by looking at what is next, the pharynx and the esophagus thereafter.